We uh, rightfully so spend a lot of time about, or a lot of time talking about the imbalance of power in college football. There are haves, and there's very few haves, and there are have-nots, and there is very little upward mobility. There's a lot of downward mobility, not very much upward mobility, but there is some. There is a chance for a have-not to become a have. Look at Clemson. What was Clemson before Dabo Sweeney took over? Irrelevant. I mean, the only headlines that Clemson had made since 1981 was a fight against South Carolina in which the front page of the newspaper in my hometown was a South Carolina player stomping on the back of the head of a Clemson player. That's all we had, really, until Dabo Sweeney took over in terms of national relevance. And now look at them. They're one of college football's powers. My question is, who's next? Is Clemson going to fall off? I think so. I think they've got a coach that is unwilling to adapt, and that will kill him. After a tough start to the year, I mean, Clemson had to kind of scratch and claw their way through the season. But they finished the regular season 9-3, and three, didn't they? Yeah, they did. ten and three, and with the bowl win. So yeah, they won a bowl game. They, uh, they, so, they, so the they turned it around. Clemson was ten, ten. Now we we can all agree that one, it was in the ACC, and two, it looked it did not look like Clemson has looked. It looks different. And they lose the the leader of what really held that team together, which was their defense. Yeah. And Venables, their longtime DC, is gone. It's true. I do think it's going to be fascinating to watch over the next four or five years if Clemson is able to do what you say, Borky, they're not going to be able to do, which is kind of like reconstitute themselves, which will take a little bit of a willingness to change at the top from Dabo, or if they had a great run and then they just kind of slide back into, you know, eight to nine win land, seven to ten win land which is decidedly not where they've been for the last few years. Sorry, but I derailed it. Your question was, who's next? So I have, a, I have an answer, I think. I'm going to go with Baylor. Baylor's about to be the top dog in a conference without Texas and Oklahoma, but it's still a power five by all definitions, right? And if we go to a 12-team playoff, it doesn't really matter. I love Aranda. I think he's a great coach. and. You know, there's there's going to be something to be said about being kind the, the, of the best anti-Dabo too. Yeah, yeah. So I and I, I think that I think there's something to be said about being the the biggest Big Twelve program in Texas. You may not get those elite kids, but you can get good kids there. Plenty, there's plenty of talent in Texas to go around, and I think he's a good developmental coach. I, I just see I just see them being the big dog in the Big Twelve in the revamped Big 12. Is Southern Cal a cop-out answer? Kind of. I mean, that's, that's a traditional of? power. They can that, – that, them getting back – it's them getting – they would be getting back to being so, a power. So, so, yeah, okay. So, so we're saying – Yeah. Who's been just a very average program for an extended period of time that is about to take a step into – into that consistent yeah. New Year's Six Bowl territory, right. Ter- right. territory, right? Tough word. Southern yeah. Cal's mid- not a bad a, answer, though. A mid-tier program that's about to become a year-in, year-out top ten program. Okay, Is so clearly such it's Ole Miss. <laughs> These guys, I tell you. Well, I was being a little funny, and I was doing that solely for just, your just benefit. Just to get the reaction, I know. But, but, what if Ole Miss is on the verge of becoming a consistent what they were last year? I know we talk about generational quarterbacks and cycles and whatnot, but here's what I'm getting at. By the way, I'm not predicting that Ole Miss is about to roll into the decade of success that Clemson had. I'm, I'm I'm not predicting that. But what if Lane Kiffin was ahead of the curve and was kind of playing chess on this whole transfer portal thing? And he does have the ability to kind of shape the culture of a locker room 
because of the fact that he just approaches it from a pro mentality, pro mindset, I think is their their buzz phrase. And they're able to just kind of restock it so that there's not a fall off. So, so here would be the cycle, though, right? So that they, they won 10 and they got to the Sugar Bowl. And then you got to win 9 or 10 again this coming year. And if you do it again the following year, now you've kind of elevated things as a program. And maybe you don't change, but maybe you tweak the recruiting philosophy a little bit because you're getting interest because you've been a household name for three years or four years or whatever the time frame is. And now maybe the high school recruiting profile gets a little bit better, but he doesn't really abandon. We're just going to bring in guys from the transfer portal because we've proven that this is a model that can work, (laughs) not just to our fans and ourselves, but we've proven to transfers that if you come here, you can be successful and we can get you to the next stage. All of that revolves around one guy, Jackson Dart. He has to be able to to provide the kind of leadership and and production that Matt Corral did. Because if he doesn't do that, everything else is kind of for naught. You you can't win big if your quarterback's not great. And th- I think we lost you for a second. I mean, I I hear what you're saying, in that you got to have stellar quarterback play. And we'll see what that looks like, whether it's Jackson Dart or, or Luke Altmeyer. I mean, Borky, the thing that we've seen under – sorry, I did that for your benefit. The thing that we've I do seen it under too Lane every Kiffin, day, so it's fun. The thing that we've seen under Lane Kiffin is production at the quarterback position. Everywhere. Every – all of them. Blake Sims forward. And, I mean, really going back farther than that. I mean, going back to his time as head coach at Southern Cal, et cetera. Here's one, Borky. Here's a suggestion. Somebody says, I think Tennessee. That's another one getting back, though. Yeah, I think at this point they've been gone so long. I mean, I was alive when Tennessee won the national championship. I don't remember a second of it. If the guys you're recruiting weren't alive when you were last on top of the college football world, I think you can qualify here. Like, I think Miami is a, a – that was the first thing that came to my mind, is Miami is going to soon enter that. But where that's they're very much one of a getting back. Right. Because they were on top of the coach. Tennessee only world. had one. I mean, you got to go back a long way. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, when Peyton Manning was there, they were really good. And they, they, I mean, they were good if you – you know, they won the East in a one. Guys, I'm 30 in a month and a few days. And I don't remember at all, at all, Tennessee's last national championship. I don't remember a second of it. Mm. I was six. Yeah. I think that that can qualify here. If you've been gone that long, you count. 